What is up, everybody? We are coming to you live from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah, here for the regional championship finals between uh, Pickle Sword, Matthew Greaves, and Emilio Estrada. Estrada, yeah. Oh, man, nailing it. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, and joined again by my good friend, Len Duel. If it's half as good as that last match, I am very excited for it because that was an awesome last match, and I'm really excited for both these players. I've been impressed all day by how they've been yeah. playing what we saw in Swiss and what we've seen in Top Cut so far. I really like the, the defensive style that uh, yes. both are, and conservative style that both mm -hmm. are using, and uh, I think it should be a really interesting matchup. Could be another pretty long match. Yeah. Uh, these, when these kind of styles come up against each other, yeah, it's, your it's a little things, rough. Things can go I have the end. quite a few interesting tidbits here. My right. first one is, Emilio was my smart money, mm -hmm. but Matthew's been playing so well today. Oh, actually, they're both my smart money. Yeah. Oh, I, ooh, baby. Oh, because of the gang guard. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but so I was gonna say, but I wouldn't be disappointed by Matthew winning. I think he's been playing very, very well today. Um, I actually talked to Matthew. Um, during the Emilio Joseph game, and he was actually more worried about Joseph than Emilio in terms of team matchup. Well, which to me, I, well, my experience with Gengar, the techs are different, so my immediate thought was just like, oh, that matchup is bad. But things like Volcarona really changed that up a lot. He had a reason to be worried. We yes. actually streamed the very first yeah, match exactly. of the day was uh, I completely Joseph forgot about that while I was talking to him. Matthew and uh, Joseph won pretty easily. Oh, yeah, uh, totally. The bravery was just too much for, for Matthew to handle. Doesn't have to worry about that now. All right, so team preview. Uh, we're seeing from Matt, or sorry, from Emilio, once again, Metagross, Amoongus, Landers, Therian, Tapu Lele, Heatran, and Zapdos versus Matthew's Gengar, Kamo'o, Tyranitar, Hitmontop, Volcarona, and Tapu Bulu. Yeah, so teams you should be familiar with by now. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I personal I, the tech is different my experience is different but just from what i personally feel i don't like metagross amoongus lele uh, in the matchup for for gangar i think it's a bad matchup for gangar but i think volcarona things like belly drum komoo kind of change it up a bit yeah i was gonna say komoo seems pretty good in this matchup uh Helps against uh, a lot of the options here. You do have to find a way to actually set up a belly drum because yeah. you're going to want all that drain punch damage to really be a threat. Obviously, you have no way to touch Tapu Lele at all with that combo. No. So you're going to be relying on Gengar, probably. Yeah, Gengar plays damage. a huge role here, even more than before. Which is saying a lot because Gengar has been absolutely vital in every game. Yeah, I mean, it's the crux of the team in every match, but really here it's going to be responsible for damage and it's going to be responsible for that shadow type yeah. support. It's um, carrying the team on its back. And I think that combo, especially... In, I hit my top with it become important because otherwise Heatran is just kind of sneaky good in this matchup. It, <laughs> Isn't it? It beats Gengar pretty well, beats Bulu pretty well, definitely beats that Volcarona. So you're going to need one yeah. of your two fighting types to, to handle that Heatran for you. I mean, in my mind, you're bringing Metagross, Lele, and Amoongus immediately. I think Amoongus looks fantastic in this matchup. Uh, all you really have to do is avoid the overheats, and you're in a great position, especially since there is nothing that stops for. Just nothing. Yeah. Team uh, matchup, we see Gengar hit on top from Matthew. Uh, you know, I like that lead a lot. The hit on top, uh, the fake out pressure, just very good early on. Metagross Lele from uh, Emilio, and that lead's going to pay off really well. You have two very scary psychic types. Uh, Gengar doesn't like either one, and the fake out doesn't even work in this situation because of the psychic terrain. Yeah, Gengar doesn't like either one. Hit on top doesn't like either one. Yeah. Big, big threats of damage coming out. Uh, but of course, Gengar itself going to be faster than both of these and threaten a lot of damage too. So, uh, kind of a precarious position for uh, both players. Alright, so I would really like to test my theory here. If Matthew protects Gengar on this turn, M Emilio should be able to, like, open... He should be able to go to the big library of Greaves, you know what I'm saying? Like, Matthew has played consistently incredibly defensive all day. No one has punished any of his defensive pivots. No one has punished any of his protects, really. And I, the, you haven't really had time to research that, but I, I think that is a big step in beating Matthew here. You think you should re he should read his defensive style and be yes. prepared for all of those yes. defensive plays. But that can be a risk in its own right. Well, exactly, but uh, that's part of what the excitement and the heat of the moment. Uh, so, Gengar activating its Mega Form, getting that Shadow Tag out there, preventing Mega Gross. Oh! Okay, so, Mega Gross protects it. No protect from Matthew, so I would have got slapped in the face on this turn, essentially. Uh, Sludge Bomb, oh, wrong protect. And that's Ooh. a KO. Oh, that's such a big turn one. Getting the KO on top <laughs> of it, getting it off the field. 
Uh, yeah, I mean that's it's um, that's part of what makes Lele Metagross a little scared. Gengar can theoretically KO either one. Now, usually Metagross is EV'd to take Shadow Ball. Yeah, uh, pretty easy to train that Metagross to be able to take Shadow Ball from Gengar and make this a less precarious position. Uh, because if, if you really are just allowing Metagross to also just get yeah. KO'd by Gengar, that speed advantage Gengar has is, is kind of hard to handle. Uh, you're going to need yeah. to be able to take an attack and threaten Gengar back. Uh, th that's part of why I think Amoongus is so vital here. You really take away a lot of that pressure if you don't have to worry about either Pokemon being KO'd through the redirection. Yeah, uh, for sure. If you can use Amoongus to kind of diffuse Gengar's offense and allow Metagross and Tapu Lele to both get attacks off already. Obviously, already the opportunity for Tapu Lele to get any attacks off has been missed. Now you've got to take advantage of this Metagross. Wide guard, watching out for that Earthquake, even though I really hope he doesn't do that with his Metagross right next to him. Uh, the Shadow Ball from Gengar. Hopefully that Metagross has been trained in such a way to be able to take Shadow Balls, but it hasn't been. Oh, that's just a one that's KO. Brutal. I don't know if that's a damage roll, but that's Gengar. Two Rock attacks, side two the wide guard. Oh my god! What is happening? I think this, I've entered, like, Mirror World or something. This is going so well for Matthew so quickly. We did not at all expect for the game to just no. kind of roll out he damage didn't bring so Amoongus? fast. Heatran coming in, we talked about how important Heatran could be, but it's now in against Hitmontop. It's going to make sure that Landers can't safely Earthquake. As long as Heatran's there, you're going to be having to worry about yeah. that. This is such a big deficit for Emilio already. I am almost shocked at how much freedom Emilio has given Mega Gengar. It's, it's insanity, really. It's, it's so good. Uh, the wide guard going out and preventing that earthquake again, even though once more you're not really going to earthquake, you might rock slide. Icy wind, you know, uh, creating a situation where you hit the landers for good damage, but you also make sure that Kamo, or I'm not sorry, Kamo, anything really that comes in will be faster than both the Heatran and the landers in case something goes wrong. Yeah, for instance, the hit on top now being faster than Heatran, likely. Knock off, not enough, even though it hadn't been intimidated. Uh, heat wave being blocked by that wide guard. I don't think Matthew could have asked for a better game one. Yeah, I mean, this is just so clean. I think you can just icy win in close combat if it's not already the KO on Heatran. You're most of the way there. He might have needed a water break or something. Uh, if that was very rough. I almost, I think he's just unfamiliar with this matchup. Yeah, maybe just things got out of hand too quickly. Didn't see a lead matchup he expected. Took a risk. Didn't pay off. Took mm -hmm. another risk. He got punished again, and that was it. He's going to need to look to, to maybe lead into better positions and, and take fewer risks to those Tapu Lele and Metagross because they're going to be like necessary yeah. offense. And I think you're right. Moongus can be really valuable in helping yeah. to make sure that happens. You do have to worry about Volcarona, but other you than do. that, there's not too many threats. Como O doesn't do that much to Amoongus. Hitmontop's not doing anything to Amoongus. Mubulu's not doing much to Amoongus. Even Tyranitar is something Amoongus can handle. Yeah, so. Amoongus can toe-toe with him. So I think you've got to have Amoongus back in this game, too, and just kind of move on from that game one. It went terribly for you, but you've got to look forward to these next two games. Yeah, and, I, you, and you have to shake that off, which is a lot easier said than done. I mean, you could argue from the instant Lele was KO'd, he was shaken up. The, I mean, he really didn't have any options against Mega Gengar, I think, without the Amoongus, which obviously does make Volcarona a valuable piece in this game. And I mean, my in my imagination, hit my top. Gengar, Volcarona, and then either Bulu or Kamo'o are the obvious choices here. Yeah. I mean, I know I just named five Pokemon, which makes <laughs> them very obvious choices, but three of them are for sure, and then, like, the other one's a little up in the air. Yeah, I mean, I think you definitely have Volcarona hit on top Gengar. Yeah. What the last is is not as important. Um, this is actually the funniest of interpretation of, really of uh, Top Moth that I've seen so far. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Support, double support Top Moth. <laughs> All right, we're going right back into the lead matchup. I'm really hoping to see something that can uh, stand up to this Mega Gengar a little bit. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that... I mean, obviously, we talked about how Metagross can take that Shadow Ball. That means yeah. this Gengar really is as offensive as it can be, something you wouldn't uh, necessarily assume from Matthew. All right, this time going for the Volcarona right in the front, realizing that he just got away with murder, basically. No Moongus there. So you do create this interesting little situation where, you know... Amoongus might get hit by that overheat. Gengar might KO me. Yeah, I mean, you have to kind of predict which attack's coming off, right? If you don't Rage Powder and Sludge Bomb just hits Tapu Lele, we've started down the path of repeating game one. If you...
do a Rage Powder, but Gengar just protects itself. Even if you get the Shattered Psyche for like 90%, it's not the KO, and Volcarona can just overheat Amoongus back. So. Oh, Volcarona takes the Shattered Psyche? Uh, Volcarona, no, shouldn't take the Shattered Psyche. Oh, okay, I would Gengar hope not. That would be ridiculous. Yes, Psyche. okay, that's fine. So if Gengar protects itself while you try for like a Rage Powder Shattered Psyche okay. play, you're, you're likely to give up Amoongus and, and not actually get the KO against Gengar. Uh, we'll have to see whether Volcarona or Tapu Lele is faster, but based on how slow that Tapu Lele was in the last game, I expect Volcarona is actually faster. That was an extreme speed of your own there, huh, bud? Yeah. Had to get it out there <laughs> Lenun. before that mega evolution All right, out. so we are seeing the Protect from Gengar this time, kind of going back to the old tried and true. Actually, ooh, Protect's on both sides. I don't think that the Overheat should be able to KO that Volcarona, but now you have to hope that Lele had the foresight to be able to go for it. And he does. Yeah. Psychic going on to that Moth. So a much stronger first turn for Emilio here, getting uh, oh, and a special defense drop too. Uh, getting lots of really valuable damage off against Volcarona and defusing the first turn of offensive pressure, but it still wasn't a KO, and Matthew is obviously still, obviously still threatening KO, yeah. so you have to progress through more turns and actually kind of escape the situation. You've kind of pushed it forward a turn, picked up some valuable damage, but not totally escaped yet. No, I, there's still pressure for sure, especially since we have, I've, I personally have no idea how that, Amoongus has a, such a big variety in the way it can be trained defensively. Some of them go physical, some of them go special, some of them try to stay in the middle. And so the overheat damage here could really depend on that. If he's able to take both hits and get score retaliatory KO, that could be huge for Emilio. You think it's possible to take Sludge Bomb and overheat? No, no. No. All right, Gengar switching out, hit on top, coming back in here. I mean, you're, you're fine with that. That's, uh, to me, that's more a fodderized move anyway, hoping to lure you into attacking the Gengar slot while you uh, uh, deal with the Amoongus hit with the Overheat. The Rage Powder does come out, trying to get rid of the Gengar pressure from before. Overheat hidden that Mushroom. I do like him roasted. Not taking that at all. Now, if you see the Psychic, really Psychic in any slot, but more devastatingly, the Hitmontop slot. Uh, creates this position for Gengar to get back in safely and, you know, just kind of restart the cycle here. Yeah, hit on top, get sacrificed there, traded for the Amoongus. I think that's a valuable trade. Absolutely. Yeah, so take that valuable. every day. And it means Gengar is back in on the field, still has a Rage Powder support next to it, and that Volcarona can threaten so much damage to Tapu Lele. And, you know, it still has that redirection support as well. It's not like you could just try and create a trade. You, I mean, you can try and create a trade scenario, but I think... Matthew's going to come out and battle top. If he sends in the Metagross, for instance, you might be able to pick up the KO on the Volcarona. Uh, but then what? Gengar's still there. And it'll score another KO on the next turn. See, Landorus, as opposed to the Metagross. And, and this is where you like miss that. Hitmontop. You don't have the wide yeah. guard. You don't have the Intimidate. This Landorus yeah. is a much bigger threat to these two Pokemon now. You see that, if you see that Earthquake come out, that's likely the KO on both of these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And probably no way to stop it. Icy Wind plus Overheat. Is a maybe a uh, nah, minus two no special way. attack Not from after, Volcarona, yeah. um, but that would just be leaving Tapu Lele uh, totally untouched and free to, mm. to go for an attack. So uh, Landris coming in in a really strong position here, I think. Yeah, well, Landris looks very good. I think the best four for Emilio personally is Metagross, Lele, Mungus. Been saying that the whole time, but then the Landris in there as well. Just provides that like cool little situation. Him on top was easy fodder. Gengar going for the protect. You don't want the earthquake to get too much, and I think that was a very solid play. Volcarona going for it as well, uh, just trying to burn that Tapu Lele protect turn, making the earthquake that seems so safe much less so. Yeah, burning the Tapu Lele protect turn, so you can also land the sludge bomb there if you want it. Tapu Lele can't switch because of that shadow tag, so you're free to just target yeah. down for a KO there. Um, you would then be giving up an earthquake, but maybe there's a, a switch from Volcarona you can make to to make that a trade. Uh, but this is where you'd really love Intimidate, because if you could switch yes. in, hit on top, and Intimidate, on then top you would could excellent. even save Gengar. And that makes me assume that Kamo'o is in the back, and he just saw it as a... I mean, and it is a much better win con. Yeah, if you can have Kamo'o there, especially if it is like... Oh, well, we have to expect Metagross in the back for yeah, absolutely. Emilio over the But even then, like the your options game. for that aren't great either. Everything remaining on Matthew's side of the field does not like Metagross. Tapulele trying for the double protect. Uh, okay. I mean, yeah, why not? Because the Sludge Bomb was impossible to stop anyway. Oh, One HP. my! Wow, but the, the poison! Oh, okay. I mean, so Tapu Lele's going to go down, but matter. it's going to get an attack off. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, no, that was going to happen either way. The poison was just kind of the, like, amusing little uh, centerpiece there. So I, you, you're probably going to see Metagross Landorus against a single Pokemon, my guess, Kamo'o. And that was just the perfect little positioning that you needed to edge out the game on Matthew. Amoongus, I think, played a huge vital role there. Yeah, I mean, you kind of 
forced to trade for Hitmontop. The hit, missing Hitmontop mm -hmm. forced to trade for Gengar. It was just piece by piece getting that KO onto Gengar, even though it didn't immediately come while Amoongus was on the field. Uh, Hitmontop was so valuable. And Kamo -O is the Pokemon that came out. I think this will try and force Matthew to be a bit more careful with Hitmontop in the future, but I don't think he had a real alternative there. Uh, uh the Lele Amoongus leaves working great. I mean, maybe giving up Coma O in retrospect, uh, Hitmontop could have been more valuable if it had been yeah. there to switch in. Could have provided like a lot. more, dam more uh, usefulness than Coma O is now. I, I do like the idea of going all in on Mega Gengar as the win condition. It has the ability to pick up so many KOs. But it is going to be important to know that, that Tapu Lele can possibly survive Sludge Bomb. You have to worry yes. now about it just surviving and KOing your Gengar right back. And Emilio just going for safe damage on this Kamo. Oh, it really doesn't pose any kind of threat anymore. It can't go for the belly drum at this point. The drain punch will do nothing to either. And the flinch was just like the the little, you know, amusing twist. Yeah, uh, preventing whatever that Kamo oh was going to try to do. Maybe a clangorous soul blaze to... Uh... To, to burn that minute. <laughs> uh, so the ice punch, you know, that tough claws boosted ice punch. We're moving Kamo oh very safely. And I think we've seen the pieces of the puzzle here that can lead Emilio to a Game 3 victory. Yeah, I mean, these games have gone much faster than I yeah. expected. The offense is coming out very quickly for both sides. Uh, Matthew been, has been shown himself willing to take trades in that Game 2, um, and Emilio definitely willing to kind of play loose with his Tapu Lele, yeah. take risks with both it and Metagross. Uh, game 1, those risks were devastating. He just lost both Pokemon and lost the game very right. quickly. Yeah. But he managed to make it pay off in uh, game two, getting the trades he needed to in the process to uh, wrap up that game. I think adjustment is honestly hard for Matthew. I think he would prefer to go really with different in-game decisions than anything else. I, Tyranitar could be interesting, but Metagross is just so scary, especially when Landorus Therian does a good job as well. Yeah, I think it's interesting because Metagross is such a big threat. You have several Pokemon you don't want in against Metagross. The Koma Overly doesn't like it. The Tapu Bulu and Tyranitar definitely don't like it. So the Volcarona is the answer, but the problem is that Volcarona is also the answer to Amoongus. And yeah. so if you kind of strain Volcarona to the breaking point and getting Amoongus off the field, then Metagross is so much more free to go yes. after whatever is left. And I mean, that's what we saw in Game 2. Volcarona just wasn't flexible enough to be able to handle the multitude of situations, and when, you know, the strain just made it snap, and the game went with it. Yeah, that Earthquake finally came out for Landorus because of the missing piece in Hip on top. I think it's going to be uh, really important to preserve both Hip. I, you have to pres preserve all of Hip on top, Volcarona, and Gengar kind of into mm -hmm. the late game. Whatever fourth Pokemon it is may be more disposable, but I don't think yeah, those I three think are. The fourth Mon is definitely the most disposable. But in general, when I preserve three Pokemon on my team perfectly, I do expect to win. <laughs> yeah, if you can manage to preserve three quarters of your team until you've won, <laughs> yeah. then you've won. The, the secret to success. It's VGC's version of don't get hit. Uh, you know, he's really taking his time. I actually thought that Emilio's four were, was the perfect selection. I don't really like Zapdos too much in this matchup. And I think Heatran is, like, amusing, but not the way to go. Yeah, I think he has the right four. Zapdos has too many pairings. Don't not time useful out. Okay. Against, and uh, the same for Heatran. So we're going into the final game in the final round of the final... 2018 Salt Lake City Regional. <laughs> Matthew versus Emilio. I, I mean, 100% Gengar in the lead again. Uh, I, I can't see it yet, neither can you, but trust me on those. Yeah, there it is. The same leads, and I respect those leads a lot. I would also expect Lele Amoongus again a lot. Oh, Zapdos. I don't know, man. So Zapdos does come back. One of those four Pokemon we saw in the last game is going to be missing for Emilio. And without the Amoongus to immediately uh, force any redirection, you uh, are allowing a Sludge Bomb onto Tapu Lele, but Tailwind could be so useful if you can get it up right yeah. here. You don't, uh, Matthew doesn't really have a great way to deny that Tailwind no. on this turn. If you get it up, then you're looking at Tapu Lele's speed and Metagross's speed. Even Zapdos with that uh, Gigavolt Havoc uh, could be looking for a KO onto Gengar. Yeah. <laughs> well, I agree, man. But so the Tailwind pressure here is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I think he's got to go for it, but he's got to keep Tapu Lele safe in the process. You don't want to just lose Tapu Lele to a quick Sludge no. Bomb just to get Tailwind up. And I am I have my doubts that Sludge Bomb Overheat on Zapdos would be able to pick it up, but even if it does, Zapdos should be faster than the Volcarona. Uh, the Tailwind does offer an interesting perspective, but I think Matthew 
also might have the means to be able to get around that. Going for the Rage Powder instead of the Overheat doesn't want to burn that. Uh, quite literally attacks that just yet. Sludge Bomb into the, just let Zapdos do it for free. Oh, wow. That's a great free turn real for estate. Emilio. Just getting the free Tailwind up only at the cost of not being able to protect next turn. But you don't need to protect next turn because you've got big attacks coming yes. out. Um, it is interesting. You've got to worry about that uh, that, that Rage Powder. Uh, Zapdos likely can't KO Volcarona in one hit, so you may be able to get both attacks oh, in that wow. slot. But instead, Gengar just protects itself. What's going to happen? Okay, he goes for the double protect. I I couldn't believe he actually risked doing that. Like, the idea, I think you probably will see a Z-move burn here. No? Okay, I respect that a lot. I, I mean, if, especially if you're just going for the Gengar. Picks it up easy with that Psychic Terrain. Uh, he's looking in a real cool position. You might see a trade for Volcarona Lele, I think. Yeah, if you can Rage Powder with the Volcarona, trade it for Lele, and then... Uh, you know, stall out the end of this trick room, get something like Hitmontop back in to support it. But we saw that Tapu Lele survive last time. If you make that trade but don't actually get the KO on Tapu Lele, mm -hmm. things look a little rougher. Um, I mean, the great, the great part about sacrificing Lele is that Metagross does a very similar function in this matchup. Uh, so you're willing to sort of burn those resources. I expect the Psychic, not the Z-move, especially because we know that Lele has the potential to take that Sludge Bomb, but Volcarona That's takes what the I was worrying about. Turn. With zero Z moves, Volcarona can take it. Uh, that is monstrously bulky. The Sludge Bomb retaliating onto that Lele. Will it be able to take it? No. Okay, yeah, it looks like he. Oh, oh but not again! Uh, that's huge. Lele should be able to. Oh, okay, he, he barely hangs on. Oh, no, okay, I saw that stop at four. So, yeah, Sludge Bomb, that extra 30% chance yeah. to just chip another bit of damage can come in so clutch so often. And here at Pit Maiden, just to pick up the KO on top of Lele. Uh, and so that trade totally backfires on Emilio. Yeah. He doesn't get his KO against Volcarona, and he still gets his uh, top of Lele KO. And Landorus does look good for the short term, but I can't imagine him on top's on the back to sort of... Uh, it, there's so many protect plays that you can make that the Tailwind should be able to burn out fairly easily. Yeah, I mean, you can you know protect and switch to Hitmontop, get Intimidate, start fake... Start using fake out pressure. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of opportunities here to get to the other side of Tailwind and keep the Slanders from attacking. Gengar going for the protect. I expect the Volcarona to follow suit as the Tailwind is on its last legs. Uh, probably an Earthquake Thunderbolt combination. Uh, very reminiscent of that old Discharge Earthquake combo from back in the day, but we have a better Earthquake user now. Uh, so the Tailwind burns out as the protects work successfully. There are no Z moves as we know that the Z move user was Tapu Lele. Yeah, we have seen Zapdos, Gigavolt, Havoc in Emilio's, some of Emilio's previous games. Uh, so that's still an option. Could probably KO Gengar from here. So it's just something that... Uh, oh, he is too. Matthew okay, that makes me feel less for. bad that Lele was KO'd for free. Yeah, I mean, you, it's one great thing about having two Z-move users. You lose less when you do lose that before it's able to... Ah, I like Bulu here a lot. Uh, you know, the grassy terrain, making that Earthquake uh, survivable on Gengar's part, while at the same time removing the powered up, or, or potential powered up moves of the Metagross, surely in the back. Icy Wind hitting both of these for super effective damage, um, making the probable Tailwind reset a bit more manageable in the long term. Yeah, I mean, you get one speed drop, if you can get another Icy Wind off, then you're not worried about this Tailwind at all. Nope. And you don't take any damage, or any damage from the Zapdos, this Earthquake should be manageable. Yeah, uh, that grassy terrain. Grassy terrain, really cool for that, and that's why Tapu Bulu is such a common partner with Gengar. Gengar uh, not only uh, weak to that Earthquake, but even in its normal state now, it lost Levitate this generation, gaining that Cursed Body instead. Yeah, and this time, uh, the Bulu coming in with both opposing Pokemon off the ground, only the health yes, going towards the best time side. But I don't think that one Icy wins enough. I don't think Gengar no. will be faster yet, and so it is going to need to be Bulu this turn, but... I, I, Zapdos Heat Wave combined with something Landers does probably still isn't enough, and so Tapu Bulu is going to get a chance to just go out, get a KO, uh, yeah. probably a Horn Leech to uh, to also take back some of it, whatever damage it does take. Yeah, uh, Bulu can basically run wild here. The, there's nothing to really punish the Protect, I don't think, unless yeah, Heat Wave does is the thing probably a Rock Slide follow up, but unless you get the flinch, Bulu should be able to get a free KO of its choosing. A knockoff into the Gengar slot, trying to circumvent that Earthquake issue, but. Uh, he's met with a giant hammer to the face instead. Yeah, wow. Those wood hammers and grassy terrain so strong. Able to pick up the resisted KO on Zapdos from like 60% health. And so that means uh, this Tailwind that only has mm -hmm. two turns left is the last yeah. Tailwind. Uh, you know, usually I'm um, used to things 
that are electric KOing things with hammers. So to see that the other way around is uh, pretty amusing. That was a Thor reference, Lan. Yep, yeah, I, I think it was. <laughs> You, you looked way too confused. So I thought that was very simple. Gengar probably going to have to go to the back here. Uh, going to maybe look for like uh, Hitmontop to come out and intimidate this lander. She'd love to time it so that Metagross has lost its queer body before that happens, but Gengar already protected last turn. That I mean, tailwind advantage yeah. is still there for Landers to try to knock off and KO this Gengar. So Gengar probably too valuable to, to risk that. So you just switched out to the back now. Shadow Tag doesn't do anything anymore anyway, since Emilio only has two Pokemon yeah. left. And I mean, he, he also still has all four Pokemon left. He has so many resources to just pivot around, wait for that perfect spot, which Gengar can very easily provide and just KO things accordingly. Kamo oh revealing itself. Uh, not quite the pressure or presence that it had in the previous games, but uh, still sticking around till the very end. Interesting to note, no Hitmon top, I think. Yeah, we, we've seen the four Pokemon now. It is Koma O as the fighting type instead of Hitmon top. Tapu Bulu not being able to take that Iron Head from such a low health, maybe even from full health. Metagross being quite powerful in itself. Knockoff going into Koma O, but because we know it's Komomium, Komomium Z, <laughs> uh, not going to do much damage at all. So Gengar. Should be able to come back and freely go for the protects and start KOing accordingly. Yeah, uh, that lander has already slowed down and taken a lot of damage from Icy Wind. Uh, Gengar, we've seen it go down to one Shadow Ball already yeah. once. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if that is a consistent thing. And so uh, Emilia really is going to need to find a, an opportunity to protect from whatever this Gengar does and counter for the for somehow counter for the KO on to Gengar, but then that's just giving a free turn to come, turn yeah. to Koma O, and then it becomes the big offensive threat. I think this is a really cool time to just Belly Drum. Maybe if you wouldn't get anything off of it, but it would still be free. I mean, not now, because the protects you needed to burn that last turn. Tailwind. Right, talking about the next yes. turn, that first turn outside of Tailwind, where really the action starts to happen. Yeah. I do like Stomping Tantrum there a lot, just because, like, ah, oh, I'm going to be stronger the next turn, even though it definitely KO'd you anyway. Yeah, it's, you know... Nice bonus. Yeah. Uh, Komo oh, back to all the way to full health from that grassy terrain. Uh, we've seen it take a couple hits from this Metagross with Ice Punch. Uh, if it can like land Drain Punches in the meantime, can maybe take two Ice Punches. Uh, and you obviously Gengar is the bigger threat. You can't even start looking at Komo oh until Gengar is off the field. That's so much to ask with only two Pokemon yeah, left. I, I don't know if there's a real punish to Shadow Ball Soul Blaze. I think you. Try to protect Metagross. Don't forfeit, man. J protect Metagross and just do what I said. Don't lie. Okay. F fair enough. Yeah. So, so we have a new Salt Lake City Regional Championship champion. Matthew Greaves has won. And hometown hero, dude. Yeah. So well played. The entire tournament just played incredibly. Yeah. Uh, played. Oh, he played great. And most of the time, very defensive. But we saw that last match much more. Uh, had the flexibility to go much more aggressive, yeah. get those KOs quickly when he needed them. Uh, yeah, been in this top Scary. cut of this tournament so many times, uh, I'm really glad to see him finally win it. Yeah, I mean, I'm always down for the hometown hero story. Um, his play today was ridiculous. Mega Gengar is really good. I, I'm more happy with that smart money pick, I think, because that was made at the beginning of the day as opposed to just like, oh, my person's out. Let me choose another one. <laughs> So excellent job, dude. Congratulations to Matthew. I played awesome, awesome team, awesome. I, I liked his top eight game the most personally, but he just played so well even up until the finals. It did, didn't stop him, but all that we've been here for about 12 hours. Yeah, been a whole long day of Pokemon. 14 matches we brought you, seven rounds of Swiss and seven rounds of Top Cut, all crowned with Matthew Greaves winning. And we will be right back to interview our new yeah, Salt Lake City the man Regional himself. Champion. Welcome back, everybody. I am here with your Salt Lake City Regional Champion, Matthew Picklesore Greaves himself. Congratulations, dude. Thank you, Kimo. I mean, I, I think the, place, the only place I can really start is not only are you a hometown hero, mm -hmm. taking it all back for the, for the home state, but your opponent was, third place was, and you have top cut this tournament four years. Yeah. It's like, I, I think, I can't remember the last time I've been at this regional and didn't see you top cut. Mm -hmm. So, I, this is a long time coming. <laughs> it's like, th I, it's the moment itself. You've reached the plateau. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. I've been hoping to get a regional win for so long, and yeah, it feels dude. really good. 
So, I mean, I think I got to start with your team. That my your team was my smart money pick of the day. Yeah. Um, I really like the Mega Gengar combination a lot, but yours definitely had some interesting twists on it. The Volcarona. Um, your Kamo'o set. Well, where did you get the ideas? You've always been very creative. Where yeah. did you get the ideas for these things? Yeah, I was. Uh, st I started using this team really early format. Okay. And I kind of been adjusting over time, and I I kind of like the idea of a more like mixed Como. Okay. And then my issue I was facing is uh, if there was a lot of Manetric Landers teams that would kind yeah. of swap out uh, Intimidates. And so I started off with saying, okay, I'm going to use Swords Dance on my Como. Okay. And then that wasn't, wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. <laughs> so I had to go all the way with Belly yeah. yeah. I mean, go hard or go home. Yeah. So, I mean, I really respect that you've been working on it for that long. Um, I talked to you earlier just before your match, and you said that you actually preferred the uh, Emilio matchup to the Joseph matchup. Do you think that the Manectric Landerous combination is still an issue? Uh, so with Joseph, I actually played him round one yeah. of the Swiss, and I lost on the stream pretty badly. And so I think the biggest problem with me with his team was the, the Braviary. I have four okay. Pokemon on my team that are worked to flying moves. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, that can be really rough when you're fighting something that I can't intimidate. Right. Yeah, there's no real way to sort of whittle that down. Yeah, if it's something like a Salamence, my Como actually lives a double edge from a Salamence. Oh, Okay. And so, like, those things are a little bit easier to do, but the Bravier, I can't intimidate it, so it just right. goes, and it was, I think it was Jolly as well, and there's just, <laughs> I'm happy that I was able to play my yeah. friend, though, in finals. It was really fun. Oh, had you, have you played Emilio fairly often? I mean, aside, I assume you, all the locals. Yeah, stuff. all the locals. He generally comes to all the PCs. He's a pretty good player. Right on. Yeah, so I'm really happy for him, too, that he was able to get such a great finish. So, so though Braviary was sort of the problem in the tournament, coming yes. into the tournament, uh -huh. did you have any matchups where you're like, I really hope I don't play this? Yes, the biggest thing I did not want to play was a Blaziken, Bisharp, Scarf Lele team. Okay. That was, I can't do anything to Right, it's that. got the same Braviary issue. Yeah, it's... Uh, I think it's the biggest issue is the Blaziken hits pretty hard. Yeah. My Volcarona can redirect some hits, but the Scarf Lele will go after the Blaziken, it, after a speed boost, and so they'll be able to knock out my Volcarona with Flare Blitz and then be able to knock out my Gengar with, Slud, with, with Psychic. Right. Yeah, so that was just one match I really didn't want to play. Uh, with me already having my Worlds invite, I really didn't want to, want to change my team too much. I just, yeah. just kind of came for fun. I'm like, you know, I've been using this team. I really want to actually use Belly Drum with Como on stream. <laughs> yeah. That was my goal. Yeah. I think it worked. <laughs> I, the, I thought the Belly Drum Como was very amusing. The drain, especially in your top eight set, the Drain Punch was so good. Oh, like, yeah, definitely. I can't believe how much mileage you got out of that. No, I, was, I, was, I didn't think I was going to win that match either. <laughs> Rain Mawile just, just wreaks havoc for me as well. So oh, okay. I, just, I don't know. I got a little lucky in the game two of that set, but... I think you earned the game two one. Yeah. Uh, that, that one, I, that was m much more I, in the, the... Oh, you totally deserve that one. Uh-huh. Not thank to say you. you did not deserve the first well, one. Well, thank, yeah, thank you for sure. <laughs> it, it, was, it was more lopsided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was a nail-biter game one. That was an insane match, yeah. especially to have on stream. Yeah, definitely. It was exciting. Uh, I, what was the general pacing of your games today? Were they all uh, kind of to the wire like that? Uh, so I think I dropped four games today. Okay. Uh, so generally... Like gen overall Overall, games. Overall, yeah. yeah. I, I lost four games and I won... The uh, the rest, I guess I don't remember. How, don't remember how many that was, but uh, my team's a little bit bulkier. My Gengar is a modest set. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I like a Electrium Z from a Tapu Koko out of terrain. And I do oh, wow! Things like that. Okay. And so I, it's kind of I kind of just set up in a certain way where I can pivot well enough yeah. and not just get blown out by high right. high offensive threats. And so generally my pace is I want to set up the late game for a, a sweep, and so I can yes. either do that with possibly icy winding and then Como can come in and then set up or just with uh, my Tyranitar also can clean up pretty well and so my game's generally been like mid pace they haven't been right. too quick except I think I played one offensive rain team that went really quickly okay but that's yeah. the nature of yeah. yeah those that's the way the cookie crumbles on that one mm -hmm. uh, so the big final one do you have anyone you want to shout out to help you build your team that was the moral support <laughs> that really kept you going in the hard times? Well, I think I'd like to thank all of uh, Utah Pokemon. Oh, okay. They're a, they're a really great community. I like them a lot. 
and they're always getting better, and it's really exciting that I can be able to go to local events and still have good challenges. Yeah. And it's just it's just lots of fun playing with your friends. That's what gets me the most with things like these, traveling and seeing people. Yeah. So I'd I like feel to the shout same out. way. Yeah. Yeah, oh, dude. So, uh, ha Utah coming in strong, defending the home turf. It's a, It's been a long time coming, really. Congratulations, Matthew. Thank you so much, Kimo. All right, everyone. So you've seen Matthew take it all. We're going to have one, I believe, final post-game show. Uh, so we'll be back in a matter of seconds. Stay tuned.